Welcome to Bed Crime Stories Podcast. I'm your host, T. Hi guys, hope you're having a wonderful day. If you're new here, a warm welcome. Thank you for checking out my channel. All I ask is that after listening to and or watching the video, if you find you enjoyed it or learned something, smash that like button and consider subscribing. Now let's dig in. Hi guys, how you doing? It's never good when you hear that a child essayer has used apps that allow for encrypted messages. Did you hear about the possible secret message that Stefan Stearns allegedly sent at 11.49 p.m. on the night of Madeline Soto's 13th birthday party? Per Gray Hughes of Gray Hughes Investigates, Stearns used the Telegram app, which allows for end-to-end -end encryption so that your data is not available to law enforcement or anybody else. The last time Stearns used the app, allegedly it was at 11.49 p.m., again on the night of Madeline's 13th birthday party. According to Gray Hughes, a group called 764 has used the app in the past to get children to send compromising photographs to them, which they then sometimes use to blackmail the child's family and perhaps to sell on the dark web. Predators use this app for nefarious apps related to child P. This is frightening because Stefan was caught twice in voyeur mode in his lifetime, that we know about anyway, once allegedly filming his friend's mother in the bathroom and once putting a camera up to film his roommate's girlfriend in a bathroom in their shared apartment. He stored the images on a computer in the house. Dudes who engage in this type of peeping Tom crap often escalate their crimes into essay and even murder. Think of BTK. It's truly frightening to think that perhaps Stefan filmed Madeline on the night of her birthday party and sent the images or footage via this encrypted app to other sickos out there. Could he have done in Maddie on camera and then shared it with these other freaks? Did he make money on this? If this is really what happened, and again, this is pure speculation, it would seem to say that Madeline died before 11.49 p.m. on that Sunday, the Sunday when she had her birthday party. The party supposedly took place at her grandmother's house. Did Stefan say he would take Madeline to the party and then drive her back home after it? Is that why he drove back to the apartment complex where Maddie lived with him and her mother, Jen Soto, early Monday morning? Did Stearns go there to retrieve Maddie's backpack and laptop to then toss them in the complex dumpster? And did he do that so that Maddie's mother and the authorities would think that it looked like Maddie went to school per usual? Was Stefan trying to think fast to cover his tracks? Is that why he made poor choices, like dumping Madeline's things in a dumpster with a security camera focused on it? Is it true Jen Soto knew nothing? But why then would she say she saw Maddie get dressed on Monday morning around 8 a.m.? Was that the story that Stefan told her to tell? Did he threaten Jen and say, you say this or else it's over, or worse, or else I'll do you in as well? Jen Soto did look like a deer in the headlights during her first interviews. Was she in shock? Did Stefan confess to her? But again, did he threaten her if she were to tell the cops? We all feel inclined to believe that Jen had to have known about her daughter's essay at Stefan Stern's hands, at least a lot of us do, especially since it went on in the home. Is it possible Jen didn't know that? Is it possible she knew but she stayed mum? And if so, is it possible she never thought that Stefan would potentially escalate to murder? Until the next time on Bed Crime Stories.